The Bible reading, I'll put my glasses on first. <laughs> it's from Acts 1 and it's from verses 6 to 11. When the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, are you going to free Israel now and restore our kingdom? The Father sets those dates, he replied, and they are not for you to know. But when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power and will tell people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It was not long after he said this, that he was taken up into the sky while they were watching and he disappeared into a cloud. As they were straining their eyes to see him, two white-robed men suddenly stood there among them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there here, staring at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, and someday, just as you saw him go, he will return. May God add his blessing to that reading. Have you ever tried to play hide and seek with a newborn baby? Try it the next time you're around a baby who is less than three months old and you'll find out that it isn't much fun. Why not, do you think? Because babies that young haven't yet developed a sense of knowing whether it's there or it's gone or whatever. They haven't figured that out that you, if you hide a stuffed toy, for example, it doesn't mean that it has gone. So when you pop the animal back out and shout peekaboo, you'll only succeed in scaring the kid to tears because as far as he was concerned, the toy had left. And so he was looking for more things in the room. Even if you were to hide the toy in the exact same spot, the baby will assume again that the toy has gone and we'll start to think about other things. And it's not until infants get a bit older that they figure out that they figure out that just because they can't see something doesn't mean that it has gone. Christians are often like newborns. When it comes to Jesus' ascension, because we can't see Jesus, we figure that, that he has gone. And we become distracted by a lot of other things in the world. Well, I want to challenge you to stop being a baby about Jesus' ascension. He may be concealed, but he is definitely not gone. So let's find out how this truth will make a difference in our daily lives. Jesus' ascension into heaven took place 40 days after his resurrection. Do you remember how he spent his time during those 40 days? He hung out with his disciples and other believers, proving to them that he was really alive. And he also spent those remaining days teaching his disciples about the kingdom of God. As far as we know, he didn't use that time to to perform miracles like healing the blind or making the lame walk, as he had done before his death and resurrection. No, Jesus thought that it was more important and beneficial that his disciples get into God's word again during those last 40 days. That's Jesus' ongoing will for us too. Sure, you may have already spent years studying the Bible, but I hope you don't think you've learned all that there is to know. And frankly, the reason we want to keep studying the Bible is not just that we have more knowledge about God. We study the Bible because it is through the book that Jesus strengthens and comforts us. The Bible is like a cell phone through which God is constantly texting you to encourage you and assure you of his great love. But the Bible won't tell us everything we would like to know. For example, in our text, 
the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In spite of all the teaching that Jesus had done, the disciples still seemed to be looking for Jesus to set up an earthly kingdom. And even if they were only wondering about when Judgment Day would come, Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. Not only has Jesus not told us when the end will come, he hasn't given us answers to other questions we might have, like what exactly is heaven like? Or why didn't God destroy Satan the moment that he rebelled? Instead of occupying ourselves with questions like those, Jesus wants us to occupy ourselves with the mission that he's given to us. He said to his disciples, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. To be Jesus' witnesses, that is our God-given mission. How well are we doing as Jesus' witnesses? I admit that I don't do as well as I should and I know I miss opportunities to tell others about Jesus. But, and I'm often more concerned about getting something to eat, about feeding others more, about feeding others the life-giving word. It's true, not everyone is going to come to faith in Jesus. But if they're going to choose hell over heaven, they ought to have to jump over us, who are on our knees begging them to learn about Jesus. Perhaps the reasons we're not focused on the mission that Jesus has given to be his witnesses is because we're acting like babies in regard to his ascension. We think that because we can't see Jesus, this means that he is gone. And if he's gone, well, we, can't, we can do whatever we want to. We're like the class that go bananas whenever the teacher leaves the room. But you know, Jesus hasn't left us. Our epistle lesson this morning tells us that Jesus ascended higher than the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Now that Jesus has been glorified, he can be everywhere at once. And not just in a spiritual sense, but also in his human body. But don't take that to mean you better behave because Jesus is right here watching you, like a teacher standing over your desk, making sure you're doing your work. Or else, instead, consider how Jesus' ascension also means that he was victorious in his mission to secure the forgiveness of all our sins. When celebrities show up for the award ceremonies like the Oscars, they get to walk down a big red carpet in full view of their adoring fans, clapping photography all around them. Well, I've never walked down a red carpet to celebrate any accomplishments, but someday I will, and so will you. Because of Jesus' victory over sin, our sin and the death we deserve, because of that victory, we won't be standing on the sidelines watching others like the Apostle Paul and Moses march into heaven. We will be marching into heaven with them on that red carpet of Jesus' blood. That's true. No matter what you have done for Jesus, his ascension, his victory parade over sin guarantees it. Isn't it fun to learn that what Jesus' ascension means for us? And there's more. Not only has Jesus been victorious over sin, not only is Jesus everywhere at once as our ascended Lord, he also has been given back all power and authority, which he uses for the benefit of believers. Sure, 
Jesus may be concealed, but he's still compelling. In that sense, Jesus is like a mountain. Mountains are often covered in clouds so that you can't see them. But no one would be foolish enough to say that the mountains has gone when it becomes cloud covered. If you flew a plane through those clouds, you would quickly discover that the mountain is still there. And not only is the mountain there behind those clouds, it's exerting its influence on the area's weather patterns. Its tall peaks capture moisture, turning it into rain and snow that farms need desperately. Yes, Jesus may now be concealed, but he is still compelling. He is compelling world powers to do his bidding. Not their own, even though Satan is trying his best to run interference. Jesus is compelling cancer cells to do his work even when they bring an interruption into the life of a believer and their family. Since Jesus is still very much here with us, how should that change the way that we live? It should mean that we stop acting like babies when we don't get our own way. And it means that we can stop being stressed out about life and instead give our problems to Jesus to handle. And it means that we don't have to worry about our future. For not only is Jesus with us right now, he's already with us in the future. For not only is Jesus, he knows the future of this congregation without, even without a minister. He knows the future of your minister, who may for a time be without a congregation to serve full time. Knowing and believing this truth will cause us to be like the disciples after Jesus' ascension. You would think that after Jesus disappeared behind those clouds, that the disciples would have returned to Jerusalem sad and depressed. The way you feel when grandpa and grandma, or your family, your daughters, your sons, drive away after their annual visit. You feel a bit low, and you feel when will I see them again? But Luke tells, <coughs> Luke tells us in his gospel that the disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy after his ascension. Why? Because they were like ground troops who had just watched their commander fly off to a position from which he was able to direct the war. No, they could not longer see him but they knew that he was still there with them, helping them in their lives and their work. And they also knew that their commander would reappear again. And when he did, it would be to celebrate victory over death and Satan once and for all. <clears throat> there is no reason for us to act like babies when it comes to Jesus' ascension. Sure, we know that Jesus is concealed from us, but he isn't gone. He is here now with us, making his presence known through his word and through his sacrament. But more than that, he is also in heaven, preparing a place for us. And at the same time, he fills the whole universe, controlling everything for the good of his people. And that means that we can't lose brothers and sisters our neighbours, people that we know, not when we continue to put our trust in Jesus. And that is the point of the ascension. So what does the ascension mean for us? The ascension of Jesus is a glorious fact that, he has, sco that has scores of implications for his people. Here are three. Assurance. As our high priest, Jesus sat down at God's right hand, indicating that his work of sacrifice is done. Our standing with God doesn't depend on our actions or our emotions, but on the finished work of Christ. Confidence. The enthroned king has been given all power to rule, and this power is his to dispense to his church. 
Nothing can stand in the way of God's purposes and he will accomplish them with power, often through us. Hope. When Jesus spoke to his disciples about his departure from earth, the note was joyous, not mournful. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. In this one verse, Jesus gives at least three reasons for hope. He is preparing a place for us. He will come again. And he will take us to be with him. This is the destiny for those who, by God's grace, call on Jesus in faith. Amen.